I'm getting ready to flatten the neck so when I put the fretboard on it's nice and flat and square and I do that by putting sandpaper down onto my flat counter and then I rub the neck back and forth till it comes out clean and square. I put the pencil marks on it so I could see what's happening while I'm sanding. I'm installing not a trust rod, just a carbon fiber rod to help with the stiffness. Baritone ukuleles have a long scale for a ukulele. So this will help to help with the string tension. Plus I plan on putting a couple steel strings with a couple fluorocarbon or nylon strings. And the carbon fiber rod will help. I don't have a lot of tools, but I went and bought a <clears throat> very thin chisel. And I was able to get it in there nice and flush. And I ended up gluing it in. Um, that's the fretboard. Uh, I basically glued it down to my counter onto some masking tape. <clears throat> I took a nice square block and just sanded it down to make it nice and flush. And then I took a, a tool and cleaned out the fret slots, getting them ready for frets. And there it is, all cleaned up nice and flush and square. Slots cleaned, and you can see where I cut the frets inside the block. And um, I basically tap them in with a hammer. I have a little hammer with a little piece of leather. And then I end up using a fret press. And the fret press helps to get the fret in nice and even across the board. That way you'll have less leveling of the frets and sanding later on. When I used to just use a hammer, I had quite a bit of um, fret leveling to do. And that's what they look like when they go in. And I use end snips to cut them off and then I, I file it nice and smooth. And there's the two snippers that I use. I'm starting to do the top and I basically measure the width of the braces that I'm putting in, putting on. I put the masking tape there. That way when it com comes time for cleanup, I just pull the masking tape and I got a nice clean look without having glue splatter everywhere. I use clothesline clips, anything I got to help, you know, press it down. The sides come in a two piece, it's like a, like a sandwich. You can see where I have it masking tape together and the end blocks. I do sand the end, box, end blocks to make sure they fit the curves of the wood so I can get a nice clean clamping surface. And the top one is the back, the one in the forefront with the X, that's the top of the ukulele. And there's still a couple more pieces to go on it. And as you can see, I have it all clamped on. The rubber band is basically just to help the, the heavy clamps stay upright without warping anything. This I'm putting in the, um, it's essentially a brace for the top to have something to glue onto. And I just use clothespins and glue and, and they're very flexible pieces of wood. So they go right in. I'm just looking to see how things are fitting and how far I'm going to have to shave those braces for them to pop in. So this is a dry fit to where I can make sure to get it the grain center with the center of the center blocks that I put in and make everything look good. I level the both sides of the body once it's all glued up and as you can see I just tape down a piece of uh, sandpaper and I just keep rubbing it back and forth and go all the way around until any lips, any unevenness. I'll take a pencil and I'll darken the piece of wood and then I'll sand back and forth to make sure I got it all 
nice and square. That way when I put the top on, it'll all glue flush and smooth. And that's how I bind the top down. I don't have a lot of clamps, but the kit actually comes with rubber bands and they're, they're huge rubber bands. So I just spring them around to clear them up. There was one spot that I felt didn't glue right, so I added a little bit more glue and I just put a couple clamps in that area. As you can see, the glue down in the corner and yeah, closed up really nice. And there is the top mounted to the back and sides. And uh, that gives you an idea what the inside of, well, that's the ukulele, but it's just like a guitar. And that is the notch where I get the brace to sit down and in. And I just use a chisel for that. You can use a razor blade, anything. You just got to clean those areas and make it sit in there for structural reasons. I put the tape on the outside to... It just helps me clean up the glue afterwards. Once the glue is dry, I can peel that off. Some of the tape sticks, but I can use a razor blade or a chisel to clean it. The holes that came on the headstock weren't designed for these tuners. So I had to close them up. So I took a dowel. I made it the right size by sanding it to fit in there. And... I glued it, fill it in, and then I end up drilling it to the proper size for the style of tuner that I decided to put in. The kit comes with tuners that fit it. I didn't want to use those tuners. I wanted something a little nicer. And just measuring things up, the, the center holes I just really did by eye. I got fairly lucky. Some of them were a little off center, but you can't tell by looking at it once you finish. And that's just a dry fit to make sure everything will work. The gold tuners, I admit it. I just bought them because of the gold. But they're geared peg tuners. They sit behind the ukulele, so it's a much cleaner look than the ones that stick out the side. So it's a, it's a personal preference. And that's what they look like when they're in. I used the uh, ebony wood stain because I just wanted my headstock, the front plate, just a little bit darker. So I ended up staining it. And yeah, it came. I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. I didn't get a lot of wood stains. A lot of times it'll seep underneath the tape and you got a lot of cleanup, but I got pretty lucky. I used the true oil because it helps darken the wood and it's a oil varnish, so I, I could just do a whole ukulele like that. But I tend to use it to darken the wood and then when that dries, I start going to polyurethanes, at least on this in my last ukulele. The Dremel I use to shorten up the tops and the, the top and back come wide and then you have to trim them down to make them smooth and I use the Dremel to do that. This is another dry fit and I have a ruler. I'm just trying to make sure that I have the bridge in a decent spot to the right scale length and um, you always tend to add a little for compensation they call it because of the height of the strings. But I have another method of setting it to make sure I got it intonated right. And you can see I'm staining it a, uh, a cherry color. And I just have the areas covered where I don't want stain to be for the glue. But that didn't work out, so I ended up having to scrape it. And there's just another dry fit. The bridge is just sitting at top, and I just wanted to see what it would look like. And so far, so good. And this is before a lot of poly coats. The camera makes it look redder than it actually is. It's definitely more purpley in, in person. You can see where the stain got underneath the tape, so I just had to scrape some of that away so I can get a better gluing surface. 
there was still a little stain when I was done scraping, but it was better than what's in the picture. And I used this kit, the dowel kit. It makes transferring the holes from the neck into the body perfect, and you can set the depth of the drill. What the sandpaper's for is you sand the back of the neck, and it angles the neck back so you can get the right angle. So this way you can get nice low action. And as you can see, it's coming just a little, pretty much level with the top of the saddle. Well, bottom of the saddle, top of the bridge. And that's where you want it. If it sits low, you end up with really high action. And that's how I clamp it together. At least this one, every yuke I've done, I ended up clamping it in different ways. And this seemed to work out. What we have here is I made my own block with a bridge in the back and it helps me to make sure that I get the actual bridge in the white, right spot. I can tune the strings up, I can slide the bridge back and forth until I get the intonation just perfect and then I could tape it off and scrape it clean, glue it, put it in. I know that the bridge is in the proper spot. I stole that from Rose of Stringworks. That's how he does his mandolins, and I just thought it was brilliant. I'm putting two little teeny tiny brads, or they're, they're tacks as you can see, but I snip them off. And when I go to glue it, it helps the bridge from sliding. I've had a few of my builds where the bridge slides around when I'm trying to clamp it. Just putting those two little pins for lack of not knowing what to call them, totally helps. So I brushed that out smooth, and then uh, when I put the bridge on, it goes right into the perfect spot, and I can just clamp it down without having to fuss. I have two really good clamps, and then two kind of crappy ones. That's why you see the ruler underneath it, because the other one was my fret press tool that I ended up deciding to use as a clamp, and it worked. And the bridge didn't slide. And that pin trick is something I've seen other luthiers online do. So I stole it. I cut a pencil in half, a carpenter's pencil. And I used that to make sure I get the accent right. And they, the, So the pencil mark will go the same height as the fret itself. So I tend to file the frets down to that line. Actually a little above and then work my way down. I'm getting ready to put a clear coat on it, liquid poly, uh, water-based polyurethane. So that's why I have the fretboard taped off and the bridge. I ended up putting three coats and then I started to sand it down in between another coat and then polish it. And I have like a, you'll see at the end of the video, I have like a semi-gloss finish. And I wanted to give it a weathered look, so I sanded down the edges, and I sanded down around the sound hole, and I sanded the body a little thin in spots. It's not really showing in these pictures. That picture, it's starting to show it a little bit. And I used a scotch bright pad in between coats to smooth, smooth it out. And as you can see there, you can see some of the gloss and if you wanted a semi-gloss, you could just get some of those emery-type pads and mat it right out. And there you go. That's what it looks like. Not strung up, no tuners. And uh, the next clip you'll be seeing is of a short that I put up with the ukulele and strings and also a sound sample. Thanks for watching. Uh, it's much appreciated.